What is happening, everybody? James Hancock here. I'm back from my spoiler-free review of part two of Masters of the Universe Revelations. I'm recording this in advance of the show's release, so if there happens to be another Twitter shitstorm involving Kevin Smith between now and the release of this show, I am totally unaware of it and cannot comment on it. But speaking of the earlier controversy, the first five episodes of the show divided folks in a big way, and my videos about the show were easily the most hated videos that I've ever posted on this channel, so I guess I'm a little masochistic because I'm diving right back into the topic. And now that I've seen all 10 episodes and can judge which subplots paid off and which ones did not, I'm of two minds about the show. On one hand, I totally understand the frustration of folks who felt like part one was a bait and switch where you were promised an epic show about He-Man battling Skeletor and instead got a show about Tila's new angry haircut. Chalk it up as another legacy franchise that's either disappointed or outright angered fans. On the other hand, though, there were a few scenes, at least in part one, that I enjoyed, like Roboto reforging the power sword, or Orko battling against Scareglow, or Skeletor stabbing Adam in the back. But as far as episodes six through ten go, my prediction is that part two is going to be a lot less hotly debated. For folks who hated part one, there's just less to get riled up about in part two. On the other hand, for folks who enjoyed part one, I don't think they're going to find part two to be quite as fun. Episodes 6 through 10, they just don't feature as many cool hero beats or surprises to get excited about, and I was frankly amazed at just how little actual story or plot there is across these five episodes. To borrow a line from Lord of the Rings, it feels a little bit like butter scraped over too much bread. In hindsight, parts 1 and 2 probably could have just been feature-length movies without sacrificing any scenes that really matter. What compounds the problem with part two is the fact that the novelty of seeing all these characters return after all these years has now completely worn off. For better or worse, the show now has to stand on its own two feet using old-fashioned techniques like plot, dialogue, action, music, emotion, mood, style. There are times where I feel like the culture war surrounding film and television rages so intensely that what gets lost in the discussion is aesthetics. Basically, the ability to understand or appreciate art completely divorced from any ideology. And going into part two, I genuinely, sincerely hoped that the show would really stick the landing with such a kick-ass finale that people on both sides of the culture war would get on board, the controversy would be over, and we could all start rooting for another season. Well, the finale does leave the door open for more episodes with a genuine cliffhanger. However, I'm not sure how many fans are going to be clamoring for more. And I'll admit, at times I had fun with Part 2, in particular during the Battle Royale in the last episode, which has a few cool hero beats and a few cameos that old school fans will appreciate, but on the whole, I have to admit, I'm pretty lukewarm on my feelings about Episodes 6 through 10. So without going into spoilers, I'm going to do my best to break down my thoughts about Part 2, but any plot details from the trailer for Part 2, those are totally fair game. The story for Part 2 in broad strokes is pretty simple. With Skeletor now basically wielding the power of a god, Prince Adam decides to roll the dice, summoning the power without the power sword as a conduit. The result is this rampaging beast with basically the strength and personality of the Incredible Hulk, and naturally mayhem ensues between He-Man and his old enemy. And Skeletor spends the majority of these episodes just trying to figure out how this change was even possible, all while Evil Lynn, who's been placed in charge of Castle Grayskull, tries to consolidate and grow her power, leading to an inevitable face-off with Tila, who slowly but surely is accepting her new role as the new sorceress. And of course, there's the giant slobber knocker of a battle at the finale, but you can get a pretty good feel for all of this just by watching the trailer. As far as what works and what does not, as always, the devil's in the details. Let's start with some of the stuff that I liked. The real treat of this season is getting to see He-Man in total berserker mode using his battle axe, which came with the figure back in the day. And as already revealed in the advertising for some of the toys related to the show, this twist on the character is being promoted as Savage He-Man, which is kind of a cool and subtle homage to the original mini-comics that came with the figures way back in the early 80s. Because before the show even existed, originally, He-Man was depicted as just a barbarian. And I can vividly remember as a little kid thinking that origin story was way cooler than all the Prince Adam nonsense that was cooked up for the show. And what I thought was funny when I posted my earlier videos about part one, some angry commenters, commenters I'm assuming her around age 11 or 12, accused me of not being a true fan. Well, I was playing with these goddamn figures before the show even existed, so all those haters can fuck right off. In any event, a large chunk of part two is all about trying to get the power sword back in the hands of He-Man so that he can regain control over himself. And for folks who thought that part one was too light on He-Man, well, part two absolutely unleashes the beast quite literally. As far as Tila goes, I love Sarah Michelle Gellar, and I wish I could report that her story arc is amazing and will totally turn all the skeptics into believers, but that just isn't the case. 
She has some really long, tedious scenes where all the characters are standing around apologizing for all the secrets they've kept over the years. And these scenes basically drag on endlessly and suck a lot of the fun out of the show. And as Tila starts exploring her new abilities and responsibilities as the sorceress, she gives us some lines that basically try and rewrite the rules and continuity of this fictional setting, all of which I found to be really annoying. And you'll know exactly what I'm talking about when you hear the lines. My attitude is that when it comes to fantasy and sci-fi, if you want your lore to matter, and if you want your story to have real stakes, you can't just throw out the history of the show anytime it's convenient. Precedent does matter when it comes to your overall suspension of disbelief when you're watching a fantasy show like this, but that's all a problem in the writing, which is the real Achilles heel of the show. And speaking of the writing, every once in a while the show features a random line of raunchy dialogue that's totally juvenile, almost like Kevin Smith kind of stumbled into the writer's room, looked over the shoulder of a screenwriter on the typewriter, and started ad-libbing lines that he found to be hysterical. And don't get me wrong, I have no problem with writers being as raunchy as they like, but in the context of this show and its overall tone, I'd argue that these signature moments of Kevin Smith Smith humor are simply a distraction and don't quite work. And if Kevin Smith wants to talk about fisting people ad nauseum in a Clerks movie, go to it. But I don't necessarily need to think about fisting when watching a He-Man show. But all negativity aside, I'd argue that part two is still worth a look if you found yourself enjoying any ingredients from part one. During the final battle, the animation team really went crazy with a few jaw-dropping sequences that go above and beyond anything seen in the previous episodes. And their cameos all over the place with classic characters like Ram Man finally making his appearance. And I absolutely adored that figure as a little kid. I even curled up with him to go to bed a few times as a really young kid. So hope you'll forgive my getting a little sentimental about his big hero beat. But the final battle in episode 10 really is the main draw of part two. Where no matter which character you've liked in the past, they're probably going to have at least one moment where they get to appear to be a badass. And I should mention that these five episodes managed to kill off a few characters. A choice that I totally approve of, death and violence were totally lacking in the original show. So if you own the toys for any of these characters who get bumped off over the course of these episodes, I imagine you're going to feel a slight sting when they go down. And lastly, there are a few genuine spoilers involving Skeletor and Evil Lynn where I'd love to go into greater detail. But leaving those details out of this review won't have a massive impact on whether or not people will want to see the show. But what I can say is that if you're a fan of the show in general, the scenes involving Skeletor and Evil Lynn will be icing on the cake for the overall experience. But I think it's time to wrap this up. For me, the hardest reviews to do are always the ones where I'm kind of ambivalent about the show or movie. Love and hate are very easy to express, but as I was writing the text for this video, I realized the one major distinction between parts one and two. With part one, there were several scenes that I went back and rewatched. With part two, none. So I'll leave it at that. At any rate, if you want to hear a review about a Netflix show that I love, check out my review for Hellbound, a killer new show from South Korea. But please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. And thank you so much for watching. But more importantly, as always, onwards and upwards.